We are chipping away on our Sovol SV08 budget tool changer project. In this installment, we finish the tool head wiring and install some docks to hold the idle tools. We're back with part four of this series, and really it's more of a log than it is a step-by-step -step guide. We're working things out as we go, and sometimes that means doing things twice. So with that in mind, let's proceed. In the last video, we got this bird's nest board, which is a clipper USB hub specifically designed for tool changes like ours. To suit, we made up some new tool head cables using this five core shielded cable. Using all five cores on the tool head end, and the same again on the bird's nest end, but also soldering a wire onto the shielding to connect to ground. The trouble was, the gauge or thickness of the wire that I had purchased was way too thin. To examine why, let's look at this wire gauge rating table from the engineering toolbox. And the first thing to note here is that the higher the number, the thinner the wire. If we use an Ohm's law calculator, at our 24 volts, let's say we're using 80 watts for the entire tool. Maybe a 50 watt heater cartridge, two fans, other sensors and so forth. That means our wire needs to be able to handle 3.3 amps thereabouts. And originally I bought 22 gauge wiring, but made the mistake of looking at the single core column. But actually this wire is made up of many smaller strands, so we can see we're under spec. So what gauge do we need instead? The SV08 is a Voron clone, so we can study the Voron specs and see that a hot end heater, they recommend 20 AWG. And we can see in this row of the table, that even if we have multi-core wire, we should still be above our safe threshold. I did a lot of shopping around, ending up on AliExpress, where I found this five core wire, buying a 10 meter roll to have enough for six tool heads plus spare. But instead of getting 20 AWG, I actually got 18 AWG. And that's because suppliers from China can have a thinner wire cross section for a given wire gauge compared to other countries. And that's to say that 18 gauge off AliExpress is more like 20 gauge from an American supplier. And if the wire that came was actually 18 gauge, that would give me even more headroom. I think the ideal cable would be one that had two cores of thicker gauge for 24 volts and ground, and then three wires of thinner gauge for the USB communication plug. I haven't been able to find this anywhere, but if you know a place, please let me know in the comments. The new cable, as you can see, was much, much bigger than the old one, both in overall diameter, as well as the individual cores. I was already happy with the length of my demo cable from last time, so my job was to make up six more just like it, but using the new thicker gauge wire. On one side, we have the Molex Microfit 3.0, and then on the other, JST XH for 24 volts and ground, and JST PH for USB. We can see I've got the liquid electrical tape to give a little bit of strain relief, and I've also made the 24 and ground volt wires just a few millimeters longer, because that plug sits higher and these wires need to travel further to reach. I've also left off the heat shrink from this end, because this thicker cable only just fits in the standard cable clamp, and I don't think it would fit if it was any thicker. As I said, this cable is a little bit thick for a small JST PH connector, but if you're careful, it can be crimped in, and it helps to squish the sides of the insulation just to help with packaging. I reinstalled some protective wrap around the new cable as well as the piano wire, and moved the tool head through its full range of motion. I'm happy with the length that I've made the cable, as I have a nice gentle arc, and it doesn't extend up too far above the top. I'm not making an enclosure at this stage, but this will still give me flexibility if I decide I want to. Let's pause before connecting all of these new cables, simply because there's nowhere to hold the tools once connected, and up until now I've been setting them on the desk behind the printer. Therefore, this seems like the opportune time to install the dock. This project is a collaboration with DraftShift, and it really is a team effort, and for this next part, it was my pleasure to work closely with Justin, also known as Vasin. One of the benefits of using Stealth Changer for a Voron 2 is that it can support different build options and that includes tool heads. Part of that is because of the modular dock design. There's a series of shared parts, but then others are customized to interface correctly with various tool options. So what Justin did was using the SV08 reference CAD, design a version of the modular dock to suit the standard SV08 tool head. Not only this, but Justin also made me a quick video explaining how the different parts went together, which was greatly appreciated. But looking back, this probably wasn't necessary because the documentation for the modular dock is truly excellent. It goes through all of the different hardware that you'll need and then shows step-by-step -step assembly, including where to melt in heat inserts, 
the length and type of all nuts and bolts, and the specs of any other components that are needed on top of that. Here's all of the printed parts for one basic SV08 dock, and I started by installing the threaded inserts throughout all of the parts. And for that, I'm using this CNC Kitchen Voren Spec M3 inserts. In terms of a tool, obviously you can just use a soldering iron, but I'm still using this heat insert press from Naomi Wu. As you can see, once you start the process, you don't need any hands, meaning they're both free to hold the part, and that ensures that they go in perfectly vertically and always stop at the same height. Following this, I just went through the instructions and assembled the parts in order step by step using the exact hardware that was mentioned. There's quite a few components that make this up, but when you break it down into individual steps, it's really quite simple to put together. The aim of this first version was to see how well it interfaced with the standard SV08 tool head, and the answer was quite well. The only place where it was tight was at the very top, where there's not a huge gap between the blue shroud and the mounting bracket. We've decided to proceed as is, but in case this doesn't work in future, it is modular, so we won't need to reprint the whole thing. My printer has a piece of 2020 extrusion installed at the front, and its job is to provide a mounting spot for these docks. These were a remixed version by Richard Farrington, but it was discovered at this stage that the positioning of the 2020 meant that the bottom surface couldn't be accessed because it sat just inside a little ridge on the front extrusion of the SV08, therefore these brackets were incompatible. So Justin updated his own bracket design to provide more offset. This version was minimal and was designed to have a little gap to slot the piece into place and it absolutely fixed the problem in terms of the 2020 extrusion sitting in the correct place for the dock to be mounted to it. From here we can start to get a sense of how the docking and undocking process will take place. But this version of the design also had a fair amount of flex and we can see that is mainly happening from the printed mounts in the corners. So Justin iterated once more, designing this new version with built-in supports, and by the way, these are very snug and also very satisfying to pry off. These are very precise, and there's more geometry involved to press against the edges of the printer. So again, I had to pull the front off and change to a new bracket. Fortunately, this is only a couple of minute job. As intended, the new brackets fit very snugly and match the shape of the aluminium corners. And there's also some spaces that slide into the front of the 2020, with the aim of pressing on the inside of the front extrusion to further suppress any wobble. With this design, there's always going to be some flex, but now I think it's mostly happening in the printed parts and where they attach to the 2020. There's still a little bit in the corners, but there's only two bolts to work with, so I think this is the best result you can get. And that was the green light I needed to make another five docks. Since the Bird's Nest Hub can support six tools, that has been my new target for this build. So another five sets of dock parts were printed followed by another five rounds of melting in the threaded inserts, and another five rounds of nut and bolt assembly. This gave me six docks in total, but these were only the basic frame. What I hadn't tested the first time were some of the additional parts required to make everything run smoothly. True to form, some of these parts require the melting in of additional threaded inserts, and also the preparation of supplementary parts like springs. The first of our additional components is a nozzle blocker, and as the name suggests, this spring-loaded pad will block the output of the nozzle to stop it oozing everywhere when a tool is idle. To work properly, that cup piece needs to be filled with high-temperature silicon, and DraftShift just released a video going through this process. And I'm told an updated video with an even better method isn't too far away. Full of optimism, I set up everything like in the video, complete with a My Little Pony bowl, but soon found that my silicon was completely dried and blocked up at the top of the tube. My janky solution was to cut the outside of the tube and access my silicon from the side instead. This made silicon application quite problematic, but I tried to do the best job that I could, including using a wet, soapy piece of plastic to try and smooth the silicon over on top of each cup. The truth is, I'm just not very good at stuff like this, so I gave them a data set and then used a razor blade to try and clean up. If I was doing this again, I would have left way more silicon on top to make the slicing not so thin. They didn't turn out amazing, but they should be entirely functional, and that's really what counts. With the silicon set, the cups could then be installed into the holder, and the holder slid inside the base of the dock, before being secured by some more bolts. Our next pieces are designed to bolt onto this front piece, and act as a nozzle wiper. We can slide in some standard PTFE tube, cut the end flush with a blade, and then bolt them into their final position. Like the silicon cups, the height of these might need adjustment later, but we have that built into the design. That's the individual docks done, but now we need to link them together. 
On a Voron V2, we would have 2020 extrusion at the top as well as the bottom. But on the SV08, there's no way to mount this without it colliding with the belt clamps that make up part of the flying gantry. So instead we have these printed links, so we can at least form a union between the individual docks. They're pretty straightforward. The links take a trapped M5 nut, and then we use an M5 bolt from above to hold each dock apart from each other with the correct spacing. When they're all together, it should look something like this. Because it's modular, you can set this up for as many or as fewer tools as you desire. And at this point, we are ready to install the sequence of docks on the 2020 extrusion. Starting with the bolts on the underside, and then followed by putting the brackets and bolts on the front. I'll need to do some more adjustment of the spacing later on, but for now, I'm just happy to have this major step completed. We can also temporarily load all of the tool heads up, but you might notice I haven't plugged in the new cables yet. And that's because the new, thicker cables touch the inside of the fan and make putting on the fan shroud much harder than it used to be. It goes back on, but it's not the best fit, so I can't help but feel I can improve the current cable routing by putting these two plugs on the back side of the PCB and keeping all of this wiring out of the way. Let's update the pricing. I've added more to the wires and crimping to reflect the thicker cable, and I've decided it's time to add filament. I think a single one kilogram spool is enough for a two tool head, and two spools should be easily enough for five or six tools. There's more to come, but overall, we're still looking healthy compared to our target price. I'll experiment with that final wiring position in time for part five and hopefully you're getting a sense for the type of work involved in developing this machine. Thanks again to the DraftShift team for collaborating so well. I'm confident we're going to end up with a good result. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.